Well, howdy, YouTube. Unky Joe here. Knackered Unky Joe here. Tired, red. I've been out in the sun, as you can see. I got a Texas tan <laughs> down my arms. Uh, that's a separate project that you're going to see coming up here on Unky Joe's Playhouse. But uh, we had a little problem with our uh, Dell server. And that is one of those one terabyte uh, uh, hard drives we have in there is failing. So uh, let's see uh, what I did to remedy the situation. And uh, let's get to that video right now. Well, here we are back on our Dell R710 server with the six hard drives uh, that we did a video on previously. And I want to show you some. So if I come here to DB4, I think it is. We have a smart reporting as fair. So it is time to replace this drive. So I've ordered another drive, a two terabyte drive, to replace this one terabyte drive. How old is this drive? Uh, I think it's from 2011. It's an old Hitachi that actually a, a client gave me. They were swapping out some drives and they donated them to me. Uh, but you can see there's not many hours on this drive, 245 days and seven hours. If this is correct, it's not very old. I mean, 2011, it could just be, you know, I don't know. It's just getting old. Anyway, I'm going to replace it. So I think what I need to do, cause uh, you know, I'm using drive vendor and I think all I need to do is remove that drive from the pool says you're removing drive you're about to remove a drive from the pool doing so may take some time to complete because it's got to copy the data off of it of course and will result in a reduced storage pool size so yes so now what it's going to do is go through and run the removal process which means it's going to be copying a lot of data back and forth, uh, getting it off that drive and getting that drive prepared to be taken out of the pool. So I will let you know. Now what I did was I wrote down the last four digits of the serial number of the drive that was failing. So it's a uh, 8A96. So let's come around here to the Dell. And it's gonna be one of the one terabyte drives in this Dell that I'm replacing down here. So, uh, let's see if I can figure out what drive it is. Let's start with this one. Maybe we'll get lucky. Uh, see a part number. And I see a part number. See so serial number and it's not this serial number. All right, so now that's assuming that the serial numbers it's giving me are correct. Let's try one of these. Let's see. Nope, that's not it. You know it's gonna be the last drive I pull out of here, right? It's always the way these things go. No, it's not this one. Wow, why is that drive going in there so wonky? And it's got to be this one. Hmm. I wonder if it's giving these things the right serial numbers. Because none of these serial numbers match. Interesting. Yeah, none of these are in 8A96, so just double check. Not even close to an 8A96 in the serial number on these. So I don't know what the deal is. Yeah. I don't know why. Okay, well, I'll find the right drive and we'll replace it. All right, so I've identified the 
offending one terabyte drive as you can see here I put a PF on it come on camera focus maybe if I get my face out there we go so you can see this drives back from February of 2011 so this machine it's in this Dell R710 is simply an archival server but I try to use my drives up as I have them and uh, this drive like I say is back from 2011 I think I inherited it from a client uh, anyway, so uh, I took a chance, took a chance, like Ava says, take a chance on me. I took a chance on this. This is a white label. I mean, it's actually got a white label on it. It's a two terabyte white label drive available on Amazon. I think I paid $29 for it, either $29 or $39. It's got a one-year warranty. It is approved for a NAS. And uh, I'm going to start replacing those one terabyte drives with these drives, and we're going to see how long they last. Now, uh, these drives probably won't be used on a daily basis. Uh, they'll be spun up once a month, and then I'll archive data to them. And then, um, and then they'll be spun down again, and the server will just sit there for another month. Um, or a couple of weeks, however often I decide to do my archival. So... Let's go ahead and put the drive into the machine and let's let's bring up the interface and see what happens. All right, so the drive and the drive is installed. And uh, I have hard drive Sentinel coming up. And looky there, it's seeing the drive. Let's see if it can identify this drive. Uh, let's see, the drive is perfect. Power on time unknown, temperature good, performance health, temperature smart. Yeah, maximum temperature, okay, smart. All looks good. LSI RAID. Uh, let's see, does it give a brand? No, unknown. Unknown. It's only a 3 gigabit serial ATA2. Well, that's interesting. That is interesting. It's only a serial ATA2, which should not be a problem. These are all... Serial ATA2 drives as well as you can see. Hang on, let me get back to I forgot when you... These other Hitachis are all Serial ATA2 volumes as well. Uh, this one is a Serial ATA3. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, Serial ATA Gen 3, 6 gigabit per second. This one is a... Serial ATA2, 3 gigabit per second. So, I won't be saturating this hard drive. Uh, that's for damn sure. And it's just an archival. Now, it has given it a disk number of 5. But uh, that may change. But let, let's go out here and let's format that drive. And then let's add it to the drive vendor array. Now that we've seen the information on it. So, I'm going to right click on my start menu and go to disk management first. You know, I don't know if I did G, uh, MBR or GPT on the other drives. That's curious. That's a, curi that's a good question, Joe. Good question. There we go. It's actually not even asking me. So here is the disk. It's a 2 terabyte. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring it online. And then let's go ahead and initialize it. Um, let's cancel on that. Let's go see what these are initialized as. Let's go to properties, policies, volumes. It's uh, MBR. So we're going to do this one. And let's verify that our other two terabytes are also MBR. We don't need to use GUID on this, on these drives, because they're under three terabytes. So I'll go ahead and initialize this disk as a master boot record. And we'll go ahead and create a partition a volume. And we're not going to use a drive letter, but we are going to use REFS. And we're going to call this DB4, because that's the name it needs to have, because that, that's the one I'm replacing. And we'll go ahead and let it create a partition. And then we'll actually go into Drive Bender, and we will uh, add it to the drive pool. And then DriveBender should be moving, start moving a bunch of stuff around. So 
We can go ahead and close this now. Let's go to Drive Vendor Manager. Another reason I like Drive Bender. Uh, okay, so here we go. Here's our two terabyte free. Um, all the others are okay for now, although we are going to start slowly replacing these one terabyte drives with actual brand new two terabytes, but I digress. So all we have to do here is click on plus and we're going to add it to the volume or add it to the pool. So we'll, we'll leave the defaults. It's going to enable drive volume rena uh, renaming and manage the drive letters for us. Yes, we're going to move that into the pool. Okay, and then it's going to, uh, I guess it's going to go ahead and start balancing the drive. Yeah, and it's going to give us an error about point P. That's normal whenever you add a new drive to the uh, drive pool. Yeah, I'm the king of cheap, so I might as well eat my own dog food, huh? All right, so it says the drive's been added, and then uh, at some point it will start moving data over to this new volume. It'll start to try to balance the drives. Uh, let's go see if it's got smart info. Yeah, smart. Uh, drive state is healthy. Smart is excellent. Uh, uptime zero days, zero hours, 27C. Let's go see the smart attributes, and uh, everything looks good. Now, I suppose I could manually start a drive moving or balancing act. I don't know if I can do that. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can do uh, launch. Uh, let's see. Restore pools, add pools, mount point options, repair this pool, mount pool options, mount point settings. I don't know that I can manually tell it to. Uh, to go ahead and do balancing. Let's see. Even every day after midnight. Okay, so well, it's going to do it uh, every day after midnight. I couldn't set it to every 30 minutes, but uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to start copying some more data now that we have our our pool size increased. I'm going to go ahead and actually start copying some data, and that should trigger it uh, filling that drive up. So let's leave Drive Bender up here, and let's go to uh, Total Commander. And I'm actually going to go over here to Unky Joe's Playhouse, and I'm going to start copying that into this pool. So I'm going to create a new folder for Unky Joe's Playhouse. And what I'm doing is copying this data or backing it up off of my Synology NAS. I'm going to select them all onto this archival device. And so we'll just drag them over here and drop them. Uh, it's going to uh, calculate the space needed. And then it should start copying data over. I hope. I hope. Okay, and there it goes. So. Go ahead and let that run in the background. Come back here, and yeah, it's already f starting to fill drive uh, drive four, the the new drive we just put on there. So, all right, so we'll let this run and uh, come back when something uh, changes on it. So, uh, problem solved uh, with inexpensively with the white label hard drive. Now, will that hard drive stand up over time? Well, that's part of the reason I chose that hard drive. Uh, this <coughs> unit is not mission critical. It's my archival server. It's also a backup Hyper-V server. So uh, I bring it online once every couple of weeks, maybe every three weeks, and do an archival backup of all my data. And it just kind of sits there, and after that I turn it off. So again, not a mission-critical machine. Uh, and any VMs I have running on there are running over iSCSI to my uh, Synology NAS. So uh, the storage really isn't needed on that server, but it's there for, like I said, archival purposes. So... There you go. We got a cheap white label hard drive in there, two terabyte. We'll see how long it lasts. I'll keep you posted. Uh, if it lasts a year, I'll be happy. It costs, I think, thirty nine ninety five for a two terabyte uh, white label hard drive. I have no idea who the manufacturer is, uh, but uh, we'll see, we'll see how it stands up.
So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always, please give us a thumbs up down below if you liked the video. Leave your comments down in the comments section. Donate if you're so inclined. We do accept PayPal and Patreon. Although I don't know for how much longer. <laughs> but anyway, that's another story. Please come back and see us again. And don't forget that we'll see you on the other side.